Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and welcome to episode 104 of The Knife Guy. If you are unfamiliar with my channel or you just came out of some weird corner of the internet and you have no idea where you are or who I am, I'm a knife guy. Knife user, knife collector, knife enjoyer of many sorts. We are all assuming that we're all knife guys and gals if you're watching right now. Uh, and we all go down our own unique paths, and oftentimes those paths intersect, and we experience a lot of the same types of stuff. So, that's what this series is all about. I like to pick up knives that are either mine or some of my generous viewers. Just kind of flip them, look at them. I've not been doing a very good job of that lately. I kind of just let them lay there and then don't pick them up again. Um, and talk about this stuff. Uh, to give you guys something to uh, either kick back and watch uh, or listen to on this hopefully beautiful Sunday morning, afternoon, or evening. Oh my gosh! Have you guys ever disassembled a knife and lost a very important part? <laughs> I just spent 45 minutes looking for the godforsaken spring in this knife. Later this afternoon, you're going to get a battle video. Did it not focus? Focus. Jeez Louise, technology in 2021. Later this afternoon, you're going to get a battle video, an intense 30 something minute battle video between what is going on the camera is like nope i'm more in, interested in the background um between these two knives the, the new demco 80 20.5 and the spider copera 3 why because they are very similar in uh overall size it, they're identical in weight uh identical in cutting edge and blade length uh and very uh the base versions are very very comparable in, in terms of price now the materials are different but anyways in the video, I was talking about ease of disassembly, and I talked about how the Spyderco Pair 3, the downfall is the uh, lanyard barrel, because the lanyard barrel is stupid. If you've ever tried to take that knife apart or your PM2, you know the pains of that. It's frustrating. Uh, the Demco is much easier to disassemble, except for one critical element. <laughs> and that's the spring that's seated underneath the liner, inside a little cavern that's carved out inside this area right here. It's sitting in there. As soon as you lift that la that liner off of the, um, <laughs> the little housing for that, that spring is ready to be jettisoned into the mesosphere. I'm si Listen, if you guys pick that knife up and you're like, I want to disassemble it because I'm a disassembly person, right? You disassembly, f you know, folk out there. Uh, be careful with that. <laughs> I would do it in a... If you have a... We have a super tiny bathroom in our house. Uh, if you're like me and you have a bathroom that's really tiny, it's like if you have a two and a half or three and a half bed, you know, house or apartment, uh, bathroom, house or apartment, do it in there. Because then the thing doesn't have much room. Down here in um, the, the dungeon, the, it is an unfinished basement with boxes of stuff everywhere. Also, the framework is exposed. The ceiling is, there are, There were a million places for this thing to land. So I did the video and I talked about how it was easier to disassemble despite there being this, the area where the spring is. And that's because I had seen Nick Shabazz's disassembly video, so I was aware of it, right? After I did the video, I thought, you know what? It probably would be good to insert some screenshots of the knife on the inside just to prove what I'm talking about. So I take it apart and guess what happens? <laughs> the freaking spring <laughs> exploded across. It was moving so fast, it goes, view. <laughs> It literally hurt, and I was like, oh, God, and I heard it go, boom, ding, boom, diddle, diddle, diddle. and I was like, man, my sense, my hearing has, no, like, the, what, what I would use to determine where it landed was thrown off by multiple impact points. It hit what sounded like part of the ceiling, came down and hit another surface, and then there was a small pause, and then wherever it landed, and I was like, I looked over there, and I was like, oh, my God. So I spent 45 minutes looking around my basement using, but I mean, this thing was fantastic. Great reason to have a flashlight with a lot of power. That's, this is what I was using and it illuminated everything down here. The, this is the Fireflies EO7. Expensive, you don't need to spend that much money on a flashlight. Something like this, you know, you can get a uh, uh, Lumen F, <sighs> e EO, 
EFO3, e, e, so I can't remember. If you know the name of this flashlight, uh, you can get the aluminum variants for like 40 bucks and they are like 3,700 lumens. Anyways, oh, sorry. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Looked around forever, almost gave up, and I finally found it on top of my second display case, uh, about 12 feet away. Uh, <laughs> I was determined because the knife won't function without that part, right? And I had to put, I have two of them, but I'm going to keep one and the other one will eventually be given away. Uh, the 20.5s, right? The one I was going to keep at the spring. <laughs> that was the spring that I lost, right? I found it, put it back together. The thing is perfect, right? Testament to the quality of these. Perfect. Still falling shut, still locking out absolutely solid, right? It's totally fine. These are easy to disassemble, and I'll stand by that, but you got to be careful about that part. What I want to talk about today is that most of us have this irrational urge to take our new knives apart, even when there's nothing wrong with them. It's partially because we want to see how they work. Uh, maybe it's because we obsess over little, like if it comes slightly off-centered or if the action doesn't feel perfect, right? I mean... Slight off-centering and absolutely perfect action are, you know, after a while, they become kind of trivial. It just needs to function good enough if you're going to actually use it. The irony is, is that with a lot of our safe queens and more expensive knives, right, or knives that we're not going to use, for whatever reason, it becomes ever more important that every last little detail of the knife is perfect. If, you, if you're wondering, like, are other people like that? Are there knife people like that that obsess over little things? Am I weird? No, you're not weird. We all do that, or a lot of us do that, right? Um, so we have this urge to do that and knives are more or less complicated and it's more or less nerve wracking. Obviously, number one, you have to make sure you have the right tools. Don't try to force a hex into a Torx or Torx into a hex, right? I've done that when I was much younger. Don't do that. It doesn't work, right? Some knives have, um, proprietary hardware, right? Uh, like the, uh, the, uh, Microtech, uh, I think it's a combat Troidon. Uh, or the um, uh, this uh, uh, Shirogorov Quantum, you could use a flathead, but this is an $1,100 knife. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the tool that was um, designed to do that, which I have over here on the left, and it was also very expensive. But, you know, you want to make sure that you've got the right tool to fit in there and take it apart. There's, there's reasons why knives are more or less nerve-wracking to take apart. I'm really comfortable taking apart hinder knives. Number one, because they're a basic frame lock construction. And number two, because I've taken them apart a million times. They always go back together uh, easily. Knives like the Spyderco Shaman, stupidly easy to take apart. Minimal hardware, nice large heads, right? Uh, integral knives like the uh, um, James Brand, the Barnes here. You pull the pivot assembly out and then you pull the blade out and that's it, right? Fixed blades. There's basically no disassembly here, right? <laughs> um, knives that are a little bit more complex, or like the, the last example I have out here was the, the uh, like budget knives, like the uh, Civivi. Like most Civivis are incredibly easy to take apart. Uh, if you're watching this and you've never taken apart a knife, the knives that I've just given as an example there, don't be afraid of that. Just make sure you have the right tools. You can easily take those things apart, put them back together, you're gonna be fine. Knives that are a little bit more complicated or frustrating, knives like the Spyderco Para 3 because of that lanyard, uh, that lipped lanyard barrel. Um, knives like axis lock knives, you can don't totally take them apart, but you have to, anybody who's taken apart knives like this knows you have to kind of reset the axis bar in a position and then press the blade in there and then get everything back. It requires that your hands are holding pieces in place and that you're pulling. It's, there's another more complicated element. It can be really frustrating and it's easy to accidentally cut yourself or slip and strip something, right? Um... So those are, can be a little bit more frustrating. Knives like uh, the um, uh, Microtech Stitch here, which I'm not going to take apart. They have a coil spring in there. And if you've watched that, this is, there's, there is a disassembly of this knife on YouTube where the guy takes it apart and he explains that you have to push it down and push the blade in and kind of turn it and get it primed and then set the scales back in place. I don't want to mess with that, but you, you can do it, right? And then there's knives that are just incredibly nerve wracking because they're expensive or they have some parts, right? Like the Demco. And it's the same way with the larger ones. If you lose it, you can't use the knife. So it's, it's frustrating to sit and just be like, I want to take that apart partially out of curiosity 
and partially to see if there's any way that I can improve it. But I'm also incredibly fearful of messing something up multiple times. So like with hinderer knives, they're so modular, right? They're begging to be taken apart. Hinderer says, yeah, go ahead, take it apart, clean it. Here's extra parts that you can buy from me. Go ahead, right? It's not like it's going to void the warranty unless you modify it and mess or mess it up in some way that makes it not functional. Then it's your fault, right? Um, but on hinder knives, I learned to be careful because my very first hinder knife, I was so excited. I finally was able to buy one brand new. This was years ago. Um, and I got it. And it was a, if you guys are wondering, it was a Gen 4. I was, I couldn't remember if it was a Gen 3 or Gen 4. It was a Generation 4, one of the first Gen 4s, Spanto stonewashed with an OD uh, green G10 scale. Bought it brand new. Got it. Uh, immediately wanted to um, add some custom hardware. I can't remember how this ended up happening because the hardware was scarce too. But I bought a full set of bronze titanium hardware. Um, that's when I learned that you can't just take a steel screwdriver to a titanium head uh, and pull it out of there and expect it not to get messed up. On those... The tolerances weren't quite what they are now. They're really good now, but that barrel was free spinning. So I had to find a way to hold the um, the spanner barrel in place. Now I should have just used a spanner bit, but I didn't. I also didn't know about the trick with the toenail clippers either. That works too. I ended up just cutting a notch and a penny and it held it kind of in place. And that does work, right? Um, but I, I was using a screwdriver on the other side. Titanium is softer than steel. So I dicked that pivot up. I messed it up. so, And I was just heartbroken, right? So the knife went back together just fine. Um, but I was also, back then I didn't know that, I thought that hinder knives were torques. Now some of them are, but the XM18, XM24 at least, make sure you know before you buy hardware, those are hex. And I was using a torx knife. So I, not only did I mess up the pivot, I messed up the handle screws too. Almost to the point where I couldn't get them back out. And it, was, it sucked because I was like, I finally got all the hardware in there. I just bought a $425 knife and bought roughly $100 worth of extra titanium hardware. I know people are like, well, your first mistake was spending $525 on a knife. Whatever. Now I know and I can share this information with you guys. 30 hinderers later, <laughs> and however many years later, I can promise you that I'm not going to not buy hinder knives. I'm, I'm glad to have learned that very expensive lesson. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I messed up the pivot and the hardware, and it looked awful. It looked terrible. A lot of people are going to say, who cares how the hardware works? looks? It's meant to be used. That's fine. You can think however you want. But in my head, I had just spent more money than I had ever spent on a knife. Whether or not I eventually planned to use it was my own business, right? But I was trying to enjoy the new, the aura of the new knife purchase, right? This thing that had been built up in my head for so long and I get it. I want to make it my own, right? That's Hinderous thing. Make it your own or what is that? Is that their thing or is that, or is that Subway's thing? <laughs> or is it Burger King's thing? <laughs> uh, somewhere between make it your own and have it your way. I wanted to, um, you know, I wanted to experience that. The, the same thing that I had, you know, seen other people rant and rave about on Blade Forms and other social media platforms, right? And I had messed it up. Um, so I learned that when you are dealing with uh, titanium, a lot of you guys see actually, I have it over here. Um, well, I thought I did. Oh no, where did that thing go? I have a little, um, well, anyways, I'll just describe it to you. I have taken a credit card and cut it in half um, to give it extra rigidity and then uh, glued it to, well, it's actually taped together. It's either glued or taped together, I can't remember. And then I cut it like this at the end so it comes to a flat head like a screwdriver tip. Um, and the reason that I have that is you can use a screwdriver on the XM18 or the XM24 to get it apart. Uh, the steel pivots don't seem to really mind because uh, those are harder. But if you're going to do it with titanium, I always back that thing out with something that's soft, like plastic. Two sides of a credit card will come together and you can kind of mash it in there and you can really torque on it. And it'll, it'll mess up the, the old credit card. You want to use like an older one, right? There's other things you can get. Like there's other things that work better. Um, but you can back it out of there without messing up the pivot or messing up the anno, right? You mess up the anno and then you can see the raw titanium underneath and it just looks bad. 
if you care about this stuff. If you don't care, then you just you can just wave me off as like a crazy nutty knife person. Um, but I do that, and then once it gets backed out enough, then I just use my fingers. That's if I'm using any, and that's not just the titanium hardware, that's anything that is coated, right? Because if you scratch through the coating, it's not going to hurt the pivot, but it's going to make it look like crap. So I have the, all these little precautions that I take with certain types of hardware, depending on how I'm coming at, coming at it. Is it steel? Is it titanium? Is it coated? All these different rules. And that's going to make people watching this even more panicky if you've never taken apart a knife, right? But now that's how I approach it, right? So now when I customize my knives, like when I did my Kinder XM24 here, the Dark Horse, this is all coated hardware. Uh, had I used a steel screwdriver on this, it's a steel screw, right? But it's it's coated. Um, had I used a steel screwdriver, it would look awful. Same way with, with these. And if you're wondering how do you get around that with these, take a rubber band and press it over the top and then press the tool inside of it um, so it's a little bit softer. I mean, the rubber on the rubber band is a little bit softer on the heads. Again, the irony is that these are ultra durable tools that are made to be used and thrown around and beaten, and I'm babying them, or I'm worrying about how the individual pieces of hardware hardware will look after you, you you're done. Um, so it can be you know an aesthetic thing that's causing stress. It can be you know just proper reassembly. You take something apart to get the action better, and you put it back together, and the action's better, but it's off centered or it's got blade play or both, right? And that can just ruin things. Um, what's the point of this? I think uh, you know now having disassembled however many knives and spent God knows how much on knives. I don't even want to think about that. It's already done. What's done is done. I'm really happy that I've taken the risk with a lot of stuff and just gone ahead and disassembled it. I'm happy that I have messed up and learned, right? And I'm still learning, obviously. I knew that that spring was going to come flying out. I, well, in my subconscious, I remember Nick Shabazz talking about how that, sc that spring flew out of there. Um, and I think it actually did on camera, if I remember correctly. And I still went ahead and disassembled it in a room where the spring could have gone anywhere, right? I was convinced that it was lost to the ether of the dungeon, you know? it Wherever it was, it was with all the left socks <laughs> that I've also lost in this house, right? Oh my god, that was a stupid dad joke. Where'd all the left socks go? Oh, that's so weird. All the left socks are gone. You guys heard that one before? Oh, everybody loses their left sock. Stupid. Anyways, um, I'm really glad that I have disassembled stuff. Uh, and kind of learn what to expect with certain knives and it's it it has helped with other things There will definitely always be knives where I'm like no, I'm just not gonna take it apart for example These guys I got no interest in taking these things apart Absolutely not if something goes wrong with the sugar off quantum or the um, microtech um, uh, Why am I having such a problem with that today the uh, combat troodon if something goes wrong with them I'm gonna send them back in I'm not even gonna mess with it the more you, you know, we there's that urge. You're like, oh, I messed something up. I can fix it. I can fix it. I know I can fix it. I can fix it. I just did this with my washing machine the other day. The door assembly latch, I think I talked about it, not the other day. It was a while back. The door assembly latch broke, and I knew, I call that guy. I'm going to get, you know, he's going to come over. And I'm going to get charged for him to look at. Then I'm going to charge him to order a part. It's going to be hundreds of dollars. I did fix it, but I almost broke the washing machine. You know, so it's like, do you want to risk the um, entire cost of the object or the, co the total cost of the repair, um, you know, or the additional cost of the repair from whatever that it, it is that you're trying to do or modify, right? Do you want to risk that? Or do you just want to go ahead and disassemble it? I think tiptoe into it. If it seems like something that's going to be more than you want, it's, if, if it seems like you're going to be biting off more than you can chew, maybe don't do it. Um, most knives, you know, have a warranty of some sort. And if you're concerned with something, it's better to contact the manufacturer and just say, hey, I'm not sure this is right, right? It sucks to think I might be out without the thing for weeks or months, right, while they check it out. But it's better than ruining it if you're not super confident. Um, I chose uh, the wrong route with a lot of that stuff and definitely messed things. A couple of times I messed, I messed up a Benchmade Griptilian beyond repair uh, a long time ago. Um, and other knives I've definitely just messed up to the point where I had to buy, like with Hinder, that Hinder I had to buy all new hardware. Um, so I've done that. So don't, don't go the same route as me. Um, but I think, um, you know, for those of you who have never taken a knife apart, 
uh, I, Civivis are wonderful to start with just to, you know, just to experience kind of the basics of taking things apart. If you own a Spyderco Shaman, you know, no problem. Stuff that doesn't have springs is just super easy to work with. If it's got any type of spring in it, a coil spring in inside the pivot or a coil spring in like the latch of the shark lock or the Omega springs in a bench made, right? Or the spring that's in a, an OTF, right? Anything that's like that, I would say probably not. I will say that uh, in the future, I would very much like to see more integral knives. I would like to see the cost of that come down. I don't know if it will. It certainly would be excellent because disassembly is so easy. Um, I'd also, uh, I love, love the idea that Rick Hinder had with the, um, the full track. He, it was a, a spring loaded or a spring latched backspacer that was also the tool that you could take the entire knife apart with. And there was a space underneath one of the um, inlays that you could use to house the um, Triway pivot system hardware, making it, you know, you could totally take the thing apart and adjust it and change out the pivot hardware in the field. I also love what CRKT is doing, where they have field strip technology where it's just one switch over and to the left and you take it apart. I really like the idea of all of that stuff. Uh, a lot of people worry about with the full track, well, what if the, what if I lose the backspacer? Well, the knife will still work. You just lost this basic tool in the back, but it's not gonna come out of there. If you've ever owned a full track, you'll know that there's no way. You'd have to throw that thing straight down from on top of a building to get the backspacer to come out and you'd probably ruin the rest of the knife anyway. Field strip technology is pretty great. I think there's a teeny tiny chance while you're using the knife that you might accidentally move something over and get it to, you know, it would be really cool to see somebody um, integrate a lockable, like some sort of key, almost like how Rick Hinder does the backspacer, the, the integral tool, except it's not the tool, it's a key that unlocks something that works much like the field strip technology in CRKT knives, right? That way, you're not having to pull multiple pieces of hardware out of there. Um, it, you're just, it's just the, the thing that you use to unlock the knife is right there on the knife. Uh, and then you turn it, you just turn it and it comes apart. That way there's no chance while you're using it that it's accidentally going to come apart. I have no idea how that would work, but I just think that would be neat. It'd be kind of gimmicky and arguably totally unnecessary, but it would be neat. So either something like that or more different types of field strip technology, like what CRKT is doing or more, um, integral knives so that we just, those of us who really feel compelled to take our knives apart don't have to be so concerned with the little, all the stuff. Another thing that sucks, I'm going to throw this in here because this is already getting too long. Knives with loose bearings. <laughs> One of the knives that I permanently ruined <laughs> had loose bearings and they went everywhere. Oh my gosh, I should have known better. I hate that. I hate loose bearings. It is what it is. I, I don't know. I mean, like, this is kind of a lesson. It's also kind of stuff that people already know. <laughs> and it's more of a rant than anything else. Sometimes disassembling stuff can be scary. You should obviously be prepared and be willing to accept when you do something that, that you're doing something that could potentially screw up a part of the knife that you don't want to screw up. So be careful when you're disassembling your stuff. Take it from me, the guy that's made every mistake that you could imagine when disassembling his knives. That's pretty much it today. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that. Well, you can't click on it anymore, but go ahead and find my, my uh, subscribe button and hit it because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for uh, watching and have a great day.